No intro can be more ludicrous than the movie itself. It's Troll 2 on Stinger Madness. Hello and welcome to Stinger Madness, the podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. I've got Sam and I've got Jackie here. Hello to you guys. Hello. Hi. How's things in the other side of the studio land? Well, the other side of the desk has a lack of jello mm. that the other side of the desk suffers. Okay. Both sides have no jello. We should have gotten jello for this. I, I didn't think I could get more confused about Troll 2, but now I'm even. I, what are you talking about? Jello? Yes. I don't have any jello and you don't have any jello. No one has any jello. Man, I don't know what that means. Are we safe? I don't know. Is it good that we don't have jello? There's always room for jello. <laughs> Unless it's GHB laced. Jackie? This conversation is going nowhere. It's really headed in on no. one direction to Nilbog. <laughs> oh, but it's. So, Troll 2, one of the most popular bad movies ever. Uh, I had forgotten really how bad this movie is. It's real bad. I had started to, because of how it becomes so ridiculous at points, mm-hmm. began to wonder how much of that was just intentional. You wonder, but some of it is so head-scratchingly bad that it almost carries over i see what you're saying but i i still think i'm convinced that it's just the bad translation the the lack that fabrio cabricio claudio for claudio fragasso could not speak to the actors in any way yes and i think where i'm going is that he knew that he knew it was gonna i think he knows it's gonna be bad from the sure. get-go okay. because they've sent a bunch of italians to utah to shoot a movie right so there's an expectation that it's not going to go as well as it could. So there's these sort of intermittently absolutely ridiculous things that he's doing just to do them. Like the bologna sandwich, maybe. The bologna sandwich, the popcorn. The popcorn, yeah. But then there's things where you, you question it because the one line where they make it to Nilbog and they say, oh, Nilbog, how many people live here? 26 plus the presence. Who are what? You can't say that no. to an audience and have them go, oh, I know who the, you find out who the presents are, but it's 26 people plus presents. The fifth time you watch it. What? I never picked that up until just now. What are presents? They've got presents and they count that as part of the population. Yeah, I I, I watched it four times thinking that that was just so ridiculous that it was just such poor dialogue that it didn't matter, but it actually was even more poor because it's supposed to matter. So maybe Claudio's like saying something different and the closest thing that the people working around him can come up with is hot, sexy popcorn. I think that's what he meant. Let's just do this hot, sexy popcorn. And he's like freaking out behind the camera going, no, that's not what I wanted. I think the popcorn and the bologna sandwich is what he wants. And he's just (laughs) back there giggling to himself like a child while the cast and crew are going, what have we done? <laughs> what have we done? Whereas most of the other stuff that's just bad filmmaking is because I guess he wants me to do this. And he's like, I guess they did that. So I got a question for you, though. Uh-huh. It's I think it's it's hard to make uh, vegetables and fruit sexy. Mm-hmm. So if it's not a, a pop in a popcorn mm-hmm. off of a corn cob, mm-hmm. what would you put in there instead? Like as the sexy time, you know, because they're going to they want to incorporate some vegetables, right? They're trying to clean this kid out so that they can eat him later. I would take, actually they don't eat him later. Right. He makes it. I would take two cantaloupes and then stick a cucumber between them. That's not hot. I think that's fucking <laughs> damn. Well, they don't. I mean, I'm sure. Bothered right now. <laughs> Maybe you do some you draw a wiener on the side of a honeydew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could do all sorts of stuff, but nothing I don't think comes across as, as hot as the sex is so hot that it's popping the corn. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I thought it was funny. Oh, it's, it's funny. Hilarious. It doesn't work any better than than that. No. But, uh, yeah, that's as good as you can do with that, that terrible joke there. So let's get right to the uh, the real big thing, the acting that 
Okay, is there a worse? Is there worse acting as as for an entire cast? Usually, there's one person that stands out, and I still say that the daughter stands out by far in this. But as an entire cast, nobody gets one right. Not once. Not really. Has a movie ever been this poorly acted? What's his face? Uh, the kid that gets turned into the plant. Arnold. Arnold. Yes. Uh huh. He delivers a line. Darren Ewing is his name. When he's part of the plan and his buddy pulls the face off uh-huh. and he starts sort of like uh, Lorenzing from uh, Frankenhooker was like, just pull me over there. Come on now. Let's just do it. He's doing that. OK. Uh, OK. That works. Uh, and it's the only uh-huh. time that the acting works in the movie. So is there any can anybody name a film that's acted worse than this one? Mm. Uh, now, worse is difficult because I would say that Manos, everyone in Manos is more rigid. Okay. No one is doing any acting at all. Okay. These people are actually trying. They're just They're doing the wrong hard. thing. Yeah. For the most part. Indeed. Uh, and I don't know that I've seen a movie where people are have been given poet free license to just make a character and then make such a bad decision at every turn. I think the mom was definitely going for the I'm drunk. Like she just looked vacant the entire time. She looks empty. I'm not sure if that woman if there's a whole lot going upstairs. She was probably confused. Yeah, well, I guess that's true. But wow, she just is blank a lot. Uh, and then you've got Michael Stevenson, the child, uh, who is great. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's terrible. He's no Fred Savage. And it's a blast. He he steals the show away from his sister as far as funness, because his character is so ridiculous throughout the entire thing. And he's a child. I, I take nothing away from Michael Stevenson, the adult actor. If he chooses to do something, he could probably do good. But as a child, it's very child acting. Like, just, yeah. hey, mom and dad, me and Casey, me and my sister are going to put on a, a play and watch. It's that level of bad acting throughout mm. the entire thing that's fun. He's a blast. Really like Michael Stevenson. He is a blast in this. I think that. The chemistry between him and the grandpa oh my is God. fantastic and, and awful at the same time. Grandpa Seth. Oh, yeah. Grandpa Seth. We can, he is magical. You can have an entire podcast dedicated to just Grandpa Seth and so many questions. <laughs> so many <laughs> questions. The only one that you don't have to ask is you know that that sweat that cardigan came from the Sears Roebuck collection. Yeah, that's the only thing you can really pencil down about <laughs> yeah. Grandpa Seth. That's where he shops. Uh, let's talk about Connie Young, the uh, the sister. Holly Waits is her name. Uh, she can't get a line. No, she can't. But she was pretty typical 80s looking, though. I mean, I believe oh, it, yeah. it was 80s all the way for her. She she had the hair. Except for her character, her, her, her attire and her hair. But then the weightlifting at 10 o'clock at night because her brother is being put to bed. Yeah, that's what I wrote down here is that. You have to go to bed right now, but your sister can stay up and be stupid as long as she wants. Pump iron. And she bench presses for like 30 minutes. Well, if you're only going to put up eight pounds, you need to do it about a thousand times. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give her 10 pounds. I mean, those look like five pound dumbbells. Yeah. Oh, uh, t- teenage girl bench pressing. That's what they do. In at, their bedrooms, in a weightlifter outfit. At 10 o'clock at night. She's got the belt on, which is for uh-huh. squatting, but she's got it on anyway. Yeah, that was one of my costume. Like, wow, that was a very curious. I'm going to put you in a robosize outfit. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to give you a weightlifter belt so that you look legit. And then you're going to pump iron on this bench pressing machine and in you, your room. You've never seen her before. This is your introduction to her. Like, oh, you know, she's just one of those 80s girls. She's boy crazy, but that is not, you're just immediately scratching your head like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah. And I also think that they needed a, a full leotard. Like the one shot where they're shooting from her knees, uh-huh. it's not good. It's not a good shot. No, you, there's too much. You're leaving very little to the imagination. Yeah. And that's obviously an underage girl. You need to, she needs tights under that thing or find an, and find another shot, I would say. Both. It's a bad shot. Now let's talk about George Hardy, dad, dentist, the dentist, with his southern drawl accent that I liked. Oh, he's he's great. But he, none of, nobody else in his family had it. Is there? You know, I I think I'm the only one that's seen Best Worst Movie, right? Yeah. I've seen it. Okay, 
I think George Hardy may be the most likable person on the planet. There may not be a cooler guy. Him and Ted Pryor, if they if I lived in between George Hardy and Ted Pryor, I would be a happy man. I would never stop hanging out with those three and or those two and we would just have adventures. I'd just be like, hey, you guys want to go do something? And they'd be like, no, I got to do my taxes. No, you can do that later. Let's go have adventures. Because th- George Hardy is such a bad actor, but genuinely seems... Like, he's trying to have fun with this film. Like, hey, guys, you know, this is really stupid, but let's just run with it. Yeah, he's he's all in. Anytime he has to do anything physical, he's flying around the set uh-huh. or whatever it is that's in front of the camera and uh, very uh, enthusiastic, say. He's great. I love him. Uh, now, let's get to the real thing. The trolls. There are no trolls. There aren't. Um, the goblins. I'm going to let you uh, really take lead here, Jackie. I know you're just chomping at the bit to to discuss the visual aspect of the residents of Nilbog. So there's two sides of this, though. Okay. There is the people side, and when they're in disguise, and they have the crappy little burnt clover thing on their skin. What is that? It looks like somebody branded them with a burnt clover. Yeah, it's schmutz. But yeah. what is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be a clover. But it's, why? They're magic schmutz. Yeah. So they can magic unicorn hide as humans. So, uh, because goblins, because goblins. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to ask you guys after I finish talking a little bit, who was your favorite person? Goblin. Uh, you don't have to answer right now. Okay. I got one, but, um, you know, cause there weren't very many of them, Mm -hmm. you know, when you really think about it. And the ones that they really showcase are like the sheriff. Fine. He looks like a big fat sheriff that you would expect. Yeah. And then the preacher, who uh-huh. looks like he would be passing out some Kool Aid, he's got crazy eyes. And he does have crazy eyes. Is he the one that's actually insane? The now they they call it the drugstore owner. Okay, is Don Packard. Okay, and so it's the guy that gives the running kid the milk. Okay, gotcha. That guy is actually quite insane. All right, yeah, all right. red plaid shirt, mm-hmm. um, cowboy hat, straw cowboy hat. Yep. That's the guy you're thinking of. Yeah, and those are like the three that they showcase. And then every once in a while, they'll show this lady with a tight poodle perm mm-hmm. right and it's really short hair and then these progressive lens glasses so that depending on if she's outside or inside you can see her eyes and she's got she's kind of got a thinner face and they look like you know i'm gonna give it to them they look like the typical people that you would see in a town that only has 26 residents right plus presence they they don't give a shit about what they look like okay um you know that the two snappiest dressers in town are because you know uh the lady with the front butt and the guy with the mullet yeah yep yeah, you know, they're fashion forward. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you've got the, the snappy fashion forward uh, other people that are, you know, because they have work uniforms, essentially, right? So the sheriff, he's always looking pretty sharp, right? Because he's got a sheriff uniform he can wear around town. Uh-huh. Where are you going with this? Yeah. I'm just discussing the costume aspects of the people trolls. <laughs> okay. Um, You know, and then the preacher guy. Sunglasses were a big, everyone was wearing sunglasses. Yeah. At one point or another, other than the preacher. Uh-huh. All right. Can we talk? I... I want to talk about the goblins, Jackie. Okay, but now it's your turn to tell me which oh. one you liked best. I'm going to go with Crazy Man Jones. Don Packard's yeah. drugstore owner. Yeah, he he, he uh, really struggled with lines. Now, I can't tell what they... It's just picking the favorite human, fake human, right? Right. Because I can't tell which one they turn into. Right. Uh, so I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, I'll take the guy that doesn't say anything that has the huge blade sunglasses and the trucker hat. Oh, yeah, that guy. The nameless dude. Uh, my favorite was the, the lady who's always kind of in the background shots with the poodle perm and the progressive lens glasses. Okay. Um, so then we get to talk about the goblins, right? First off, <laughs> they're potato sacks that somebody has. And I'm pretty sure that these are little kids and not midgets. Little I'm people. not sure about that, but. I don't think that they could. It, it has to be kids. It, I and, think yeah, it is kids. I think it's kids. And, you know, they've shoved like. I want to say it's probably old newspaper or hay or something. They look portly. Yeah. And They're very round. Yeah. Got goblins. Pillows in front of the sack. Yeah, but it's very frumpy yeah, looking. Like frumpy you can tell that it's been shoved in there somewhere. Something's <laughs> in that area. And, you know, the masks are, it's like one person was making the mask for a while because they all kind of have that, you know, the eyes are kind of shadowed in with a big uh-huh. nose and the, the ugly ass mouth with the, with the jagged teeth. And then it's like somebody else decided, you know what? I can make some good goblins. Why can't I make a goblin? I'm behind schedule. Somebody help me. Oh, I'll step in. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. And then you get some <laughs> fucked up looking ones. 
like my personal favorite, the one with the great big bulgy eyes with uh-huh. the white hair that's sticking straight up and like this like elongated nose and eventually the eye pops out of it, which is pretty awesome. But it's just like they're panning through the goblins and then, oh my God, look at that one. That goblin is pretty much the face of Troll 2. It's incomplete as well. You can see where they tried to do around the pupils is yellow. Uh-huh. And then they just never painted the rest of the eye, eye white. It's just the same color as the mask, yes. but huge. It looks terrible. Oh, it's awful. It's the worst. You take one look at that goblin, and you know what you're getting involved with oh, yeah. in Troll 2. Oh, boy. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, and I can't say this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that the prosthetic hands that these people had, that the weapons were uh, glued onto the prosthetic hand so Could that be. you couldn't let go of them because the hand looked pretty floppy, like, up against the... The weaponry. It's like, eh, they're never going to drop those because those are glued together. And they have like, their weapons are like spear arrows with they're multiple just, points. They're just sticks. They're sticks. They're trash. They're bigger sticks that you find out in the woods. They're not even really sharp. They're just they're just sticks. Are the goblins frightening? Uh, no, because I think it would take probably, if I was alone and it was dark, and mm-hmm. I wasn't drunk mm-hmm. in the woods. Mm-hmm. To be scared of small, ugly people with sticks, mm-hmm. there would have to be at least three times as many of them. Okay, so you're just outnumbered. Yeah, the numbers, finally you realize, okay, there's nothing I can do against these numbers. What about like uh, when Kramer beats up the children in karate class? That's where I'm saying that if there was 40 of them, I think I would 40, get tired. 40, you'd get tired. You yeah. couldn't just punt. 40 kids. They would eventually I'd get start getting hit with sticks. What's what's your child punting, Max? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I figure that because they can't see out of the masks uh-huh. and uh, they're in- inhibited by potato sacks, I'm going to up the number to 65 because I think 65. I could I could roll through 60 <laughs> kids that were dressed up like this. No problem. And I'm with Sam. I think that they might have a little bit of an, a turtle effect because of the stuffing. Like once you get yeah. them down on the ground, they're going to have a really hard time getting back up. Yeah. And they're so padded. I don't think you're going to hurt them. I think that this is just a fun game. Yeah. Safe padded child punting. <laughs> yep. Wee! They fly through the air and then they land on their cushiony clothes and all's good. And you go on about your business. So what'd you do today? Well, I was going to go get gas and but I uh, ran into a horde of goblins and i punted them <laughs> <laughs> i harmlessly beat the shit out of 62 children yeah oh i've done that Excuse so me. and then my next question with this goblin outfits and costumes right it's obviously throughout the the movie they have these pictures that somebody has drawn with a pencil mm-hmm. of these goblins and they're pretty good art right yeah yeah uh i couldn't draw that that's for damn sure but those goblins in the artwork look nothing like the goblins in the movie and they I, are very frightening so it's like, are these like the historic goblins? Like uh-huh. one of them kind of looks like maybe he came over on the Mayflower. He has the hat and the buckle and everything. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, so you just evolved into these really ugly ones or what happened there? I don't think this is actually production art. I think that they borrowed those. I think so too. I, I can't remember book. the guy's name off the top of my head, but it all looks very much like the James and the Giant Peach Nightmare Before All Christmas kind of, guy. Yeah, yeah kind mm-hmm. of. Those were done by a good artist, and I just don't see that there would be a good artist attached to this no, picture in any way. No, I don't think so at all. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering. It's like, if that was the basis for what your goblins were supposed to look like, somebody was drunk. <laughs> yeah, no, there wasn't any connection there. I also noticed they, they put some, uh, I think they went rogue with a lot of the set uh, design. Because you have that Batman killing joke poster. Yeah. I don't think DC's going to let him have that. No, no. you got He's got Batman 1989 Michael Keaton Batman poster up there, too. Yeah, they're drinking Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew wanted no part of this. None. None. I like the fact that in Michael's bedroom, they just slapped whatever they could find on the walls because he's got pennants from every baseball team that's in the fucking league. He's got a uh, Montreal Expos clock. No child had that ever. And the Cubs and the Reds and so I'm thinking this is shot in '89. So this is like, I guess the A's the A's win the World Series right around then. Yeah, they won and, in '89, and they played the Reds. So uh-huh. there's an A's and Reds shit everywhere. So it was just like that's what's super cheap. They just went down to the store and grabbed everything. Yeah, and that's this what, is what gonna, children like. That's what you're gonna find uh-huh. is A's and Reds shit. Yep, ridiculous set design. Maybe he collected pennants. You don't know the they when they're in Nobog 
and they're house swapping with the presents. They have... So in the house where they've exchanged with the presents, they have white pieces of paper torn out of a notebook with their names written in pen on the doors. Michael, Holly, Mr. and Mrs. Waits. Who wrote those? Like, it's impl- like which room's mine? It's this one. Where's mom and dad staying? Well, they're staying in the one that's Mr. and Mrs. Waits. What the fuck? It's hospitality. It's not. It's... <laughs> Who put that there? Yeah. They did? I don't know. I bet yeah, 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 I, if yeah. I was willing to bet on who actually made those, wrote, wrote whose handwriting it was, my money would be on Greg Hardy. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. George Hardy. George Hardy. Yeah. Greg Hardy being. Don't a, want to have another Mike Starr episode. Mike Starr. Greg Hardy's a, a crazy bad person that used to play for the Dallas Cowboys. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So anyways, uh, we're not going to this. So much of this film has been stated before yes. by people that are in the similar vein as us. Uh, so we're going to kind of broaden things out a little bit. I just want to talk about some of the main scenes of the film that are head scratchers. But for instance, the very first one where Grandpa Seth is telling Michael of the story of Davy and the goblins. So they started out with the Princess Bride beginning. Very much, yes. Yes, it's it's borrowing directly. Very much. But the book looks cool. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they got that book from somewhere because it, it, it had some gold leafing on it. It had some sweet pictures. The title of the book is Davy and the Goblins. The character that Grandpa Seth talks about is named Peter. Yes. Okay. So we already know that uh, everything doesn't work in this film. Okay, great. Maybe he just didn't get to Davy. Davy beats the goblins. Peter obviously gets eaten by them. Yeah, Peter's a derp. He's a derp. This is uh, also a sequence that sets up some odd expectations for me. Okay. Because what's the kid's name in the movie? Michael. Michael appears in the story. Correct. And then turns to the camera, which is actually Grandpa Seth, and says, Goblins in disguise? (laughs) Which is great. And so I'm expecting, like, sort of time and space to not really work at all throughout the whole movie, whereas... This is the only time that something like that happens. That an artistic direction was taken at yeah, any point in this film. Kind of. <laughs> and, you know, you're kind of hooked at this point, really. You're like, okay, that was kind of clever. This kid is awful. Lee Fun. Yeah. I'm in. And Grandpa Seth is... So let's just address Grandpa Seth, because right, it's it's stated immediately that Grandpa Seth's a ghost, question mark. Not immediately. Not but when he, he's reading the story. He's he, dead. He, lo- he looks at... For Grandpa Seth, when his mom comes in and Grandpa Seth, poof, he's gone and the chair's rocking. So it's established early that Grandpa Seth is something more than man. Either a hallucination or a supernatural being. Who has a very nicely trimmed beard. And a good- I'm just going to insert my costume uh, things as we go here. Okay, all right. So Grandpa Seth is something. I'm not really sure what. Um, At this point, you're also set up with the tone of the film is su- the production value is surprisingly high for what you're expecting Mm -hmm. it's bad b movie music but you are expecting worse and all of the shots are properly done they're not overexposed they're composed properly the The makeup artist should have been fired with freckles uh yeah there's the things happening in front of the camera not good but there's a certain amount of the other side of the camera that things are actually going properly and it looks very similar to just about any other 1990 horror movie. At, you could go and expect a mo- to see a movie that looks like this in the theater. That's a big yes. deal. It's got you can. It's been shot with an airy probably and some Panaflex lenses because it is 16 by nine. Mm-hmm. So they did, and it was 35 millimeter. It's not 16. So industry standard equipment has been used on this, and that's a surprise. It to doesn't me. match how shitty everything else. Yes, is. that nothing. This bad has ever been shot with industry standard equipment. Oish. I also want to interject here at the beginning that uh, old Freckles McGee. We also well, I forgot oh, about the her girl. when we were talking about the the village uh, troll disguise people. Yeah, she kind of counts as one because she does absolutely. Uh, she's got the freckles that somebody obviously drew on with an eyeliner pencil. Why would you do that? To make her look more younger and innocent? I'm not real sure. Either get somebody who has freckles Just or skip the freckles. You don't even need them. You don't need them. It's obviously mascara. It's 
Oh, it's not mascara. Well, eyeliner, Sam. yeah. Yeah, it's eyeliner. It's embarrassingly bad. Like she pops up and you're just like, what the fuck? Is this strawberry shortcake? I don't <laughs> get. <laughs> as the movie goes on, the story makes less and less sense as to why it was involved at all. Yes. And the the opening guy with his weird little Peter Pan hat. Peter slash Davy. Yeah. Davy uh, Peter. Peter Davy. He just looked like a fucking retard. Yeah, he looks like a dude. It's like, I tried to get into character and to find a, a time period piece, but I couldn't. So this is what you get. I'm okay with him looking stupid. Yeah. But uh, wait, anyways. So they're on a trip. They're going to go to this town called Nilbog because they've won a house exchange. How, how does that all get set I think up? it's a planned thing. You get out of a catalog or something. It's like, okay. oh, do a family exchange. They'll try some city living and you can be on the farm. 1990s version of Airbnb. It's If you're the father, if you're the breadwinner uh, head of household that decides to do this, this is the vacation that your family will never forgive you for if everything goes properly. Yes, absolutely. Oh, we had to work hard all summer. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. I was Farming. Like, Awesome stuff. Real great trip to that town with 26 people and presents. And the presents. <laughs> and, and the presents. So they all uh, they all get pile in the Ford Aerostar and head out of town. And they the car scene where they're driving along. And Michael has another hallucination about Grandpa Seth. And the daughter's delivering lines poorly in high drama. They're actually her and uh, George Hardy are, are having a, a good exchange of bad delivery here. Uh -huh. Well, you should have should just get rid of that good for nothing. What? You could have waited fifteen more minutes. We're already an hour and a half behind schedule. He's he yeah. would have come. <laughs> oh God. He would have. Yeah. Please. It's glorious. It is. Two I do not. I do not believe that that girl was was truly upset. I really, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't suspend your disbelief with her, huh? Can't believe it. And they, uh, he, so Michael's all like crying, and you know, because of Grandpa Seth and the goblins, and he knows that he that he's going to a place where there's goblins. Grandpa Seth has already prophesied this with his powers. I guess I don't know. So, Something. Hey, Michael. Well, you need to calm down. Why don't you? Why don't you sing one of your favorite songs? One of my favorite songs. <laughs> oh, is that what she yes, said? Yes, she said sing, and it's not my favorite. She goes sing that song I like so much. <laughs> and so he starts singing "Row Your Boat." And you're like, oh, you like that one? It's that's, a good one. That's the one. Huh? Row your boat. That's a sh <laughs> that song. Fucking rules. I just like when I'm on a road trip. I like to mix in. You know, started out with twenty one twelve, then hit "Row Your Boat" right after that. <laughs> You're shouting at fucking <laughs> at uh, fi at the fish concert. Hey, play Freebird. Fuck Freebird. Play Row Your Boat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I saw Skinner do Row Your Boat at Budokan. Oh, yeah. Fucking crazy. <laughs> you ever seen Van Halen do Row Your Boat? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> On weed. <laughs> On weed, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that would probably blow my mind if I... Because I'm so... So many years removed from smoking any marijuana that if I had gotten stoned and then all of a sudden Van Halen was doing Row Your Boat, I would probably psychologically deconstruct. <laughs> I would probably just be like, this is the best thing ever. You would, you'd see me laying on the floor in the fetal position and just be like, it doesn't. It's the triple rainbow. You would, ah. you, would, you would start turning into little squares like Mark Wahlberg and Jason Schwartzman and Huckabees. Yeah, you'd have uh. to start like putting me back together. <laughs> well, Holly's boyfriend and her buddies, his buddies, are also going to tag along. They've just suddenly got a motor home. They got an RV. Where did they get that? Because it's a nice, it's a pretty nice motorhome for four teenage boys to suddenly that get their hands on. Seems like a, a period current RV. Like that's a new one. Yeah, I take that one. That's I think somebody's parents were at work and mm -hmm. they decided to yeah. take this RV that had a, conveniently has a gas card. Yeah. In the glove box because and there's it, no way that these little fuckers have money. No, and in 1990, you also have the uh, Diners Club. Ooh. Oh yes, yeah! Please, <laughs> you're so right, Sam. These kids were living it up. That's why there was no fucking groceries yeah. in the damn RV camper. I, so know, I know where the RV did come from. Okay, it's definitely Claudio's RV yeah, that he's yeah. staying in when they're shooting this movie. Right. Um. So their game plan is to go to this tiny town and bang virgins. All of them. 
Well, that's what Doofus A tells Doofus B, C, and D. And Elliot. They, his name is Elliot. And they're all jacked about it. They're like, yeah. We're going to get some. Virgins in a town that's got 26 people. Yep. And the presents. And the presents. Well, that <laughs> presents that daughter, <laughs> she's uh, a looker by comparison. <laughs> by comparison, <laughs> yes. Comparison to what? The, the trolls. Rest, the other trolls. <laughs> yeah, the, the goblins. Okay. And their motorhome breaks down. Does, no, they no, just park it. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no, they break down. No, they don't. I'm telling they you. do? Yeah. Is that why they're waving at us? Yes. It? Okay. That no, they're, us. they're lost. <laughs> they're all lost off the site. Breaking down is the only thing that would make any sense. See, and I took it as they had this map out. They were trying to find Neil Bog, which is a speck on the map. So they pull over, try to figure out where the hell they're at, and then they get passed on the freeway, and they're like, wait, wait. Why, why, is, the, uh, why is the hood up with uh, steam coming out of it then? Uh, is that part of getting lost? Damn it! Yeah, they fucking break down, dude. They see. Oh man, we broke down. Oh, I did not hear that. Yeah, uh, I just thought they were pulled over because they were lost. And there's a shot of them waving at the Aerostar that's driving by that they've passed somehow. Yeah, they passed it. Okay. Uh, and well, the Aerostar waited till nine thirty. They left when they were supposed to. Oh yeah, they just bailed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. There's a shot of them waving at the Aerostar, and the Aerostar is quite some distance away, and Holly flips them off, and they're like, oh, man. Cannot see in the Aerostar. Can't see her. Uh, you guys making this, have you never done this before? No. Nothing lines up. Well, if they would have, Justin, they would have known that Aerostar would have had a Garfield cat on it. Yes, it would have, indeed. Hang in there. Yep. <laughs> Hang in there on the back window. Uh, anybody that had those, I just wanted to punch so bad. We had one when I was a kid and I loved oh, it. Man. I think they Fucking actually, Garfield. I think that, that most of the Ford dealers like gave them away. That's why they're always in Aerostars and Taurus wagons is because you just got one for free. So now they're just in the landfill, still attached to the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, those suction cups weren't going to let go. They'll, after they've run there for a year, they just kind of bond. Oh, God, I hate Garfield. How did that ever get popular? Speaking of Garfield, did you notice the Aries Garfield nightgown on yes, the teenage girl? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted her to uh, get lit on fire. Yeah, that is... Garfield had some Aries. She had some sheep horns on. He was looking good. The Aries is a sheep? He's a ram. A ram, yeah. Okay. Aries is ram. This is the pinnacle of why Garfield sucks. Mm-hmm. Is because it applied itself to everything poorly. Right. Oh, put some ram horns on Garfield. And now it's astrology. Suck. Suck. I like lasagna. Fuck you, Garfield. (laughs) Hope you burn in hell, you stupid cat. (laughs) So I've got a question. I hope you and Grandpa Seth are banging in hell right now. Grandpa Seth didn't go to hell. Didn't he go to hell? No. No. Either that or he escaped. (laughs) (laughs) He escaped to come back and save him at the end. All right, let's get to the the big one. They, they, They make it to the house. And there's all this food ready for them. Cakes and pies. Every, and Everything's got green icing on it. Green icing that looks grody. Yucky. Uh, no, that angel food cake looked okay. The, the green, I'm talking about the green icing specifically. It looked like it might have been a little dried out. I will give you that. It's it like looks Maybe like it's been sitting there for a while. Mint jelly. It's the St. Patrick's Day icing that they use at the grocery store. Yeah. They got it on clearance. Would you, uh, would you question this buffet of... of- Sweets laid out that have been sitting there for unknown amount of time. I probably would not have eaten it because I don't eat strangers' food. I don't do that. You gotta. No one in this movie brings any fucking food with them. That is true because they don't bring anything but soda with them in the RV, mm-hmm. and the weights just fucking show up in what they're wearing. Yep. This is gonna. We'll we'll be good for a month. Don't pack any extra underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you might have That's an accident. That's country living, Sam. <laughs> They say very clearly the dad is all about country living. Country living, living which apparently is... Is not bathing. I mean, I know a lot of smelly farmers, and, uh, you know, a part of that is just not changing your underwears. And here comes the worst joke ever, because you just turn them inside out and wear the shit out of them. <laughs> uh, rodeo, um, eight seconds. So <laughs> they're going to eat this... Pile of donuts. Cornucopia of Cakes. sweets. That has been laid out for them. Because they're starving, Without Justin. Without question. Okay. And Grandpa Seth shows up in, the, in window. the window and says to Michael, don't let them eat the food. You've got to stop them. Here, I'm going to freeze time for 30 seconds. Now figure out what to do. 
So Grandpa Seth has the powers of time freezing. Yes. When do you get that if you're a spooky ghost? Well, you know, I've heard that you really have to work on your skills after you die. It's just like any learn- learning how to drive a car, right? Uh, you know, you start out with some easy things like, uh, you know, you uh, move a fork we or should... you open a cupboard door. That one is a little more advanced. I will give you that. Uh, but, telekinesis uh, and freezing time. That's that's like third level, but he's only been dead for six months. Maybe he's on the advanced course. Is Grandpa Seth God? No. So no. here's what happened. He didn't really freeze time. He just brought Michael out of time for 30 seconds. Okay. So All you right. can remove him, but he's going to go. He's going to phase back in. That would be much easier than actually stopping the whole of time space. No, I'm pretty sure they just stopped time for him. I don't think spooky ghosts have either of those powers, Sam. Uh, Grandpa Seth does. I don't know what In Grandpa fact, Seth is. Okay, so well, that's going to lead my my lead off question at the end of this thing is what to do is with Grandpa Seth? Grandpa Seth. Yeah. Uh, so he's got one choice. This is insane. First time you see this, it's just like what? Wait, he's what? And. The second time you see this, you have to start to put it together. Like, what actually happened once the camera stopped? He pisses on the food, which would make them go, ooh, that's grody. I'm not going to eat that, saving all of them from turning into vegetables. However, all three of them had either a glass or some food all the way to their mouth. He would have to piss on them. He peed on his family's faces. Yep. Into their mouths. Into their mouths. Their mouths are open. He has peed all over his family. How much pee does he have? It, was it has a long been car a long ride. car ride. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> long car ride that Enough kid did not ask to get out once. To piss on all the food and each one of his family members. Not to mention shut it off, then walk over to the next family person, climb back up on the table, and piss in their face. No, I think he gets in a good spot. He stands up on the chair there. If I'm that kid and I had enough... I could get it all done from right there. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you, obviously you're going to start with your dad because he's the <laughs> furthest one away. And yeah. that's, you know, you got the momentum going from, oh, my God, I got to pee so bad. So it's like, and you hit him right in the face first. And then you just kind of. You plan your route. Yeah. Then you're like farthest point to nearest point, getting everything in between. Yeah, because, you know, by the time that your stream is drizzling out, you want to make sure you're getting that last cupcake at the end of the table. Plus, yeah, if you, if you miss anything a little bit on the table, everyone's giving it the benefit of the doubt that it's covered in piss at this point. And I'm like, ooh, look, one of the cookies made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat this one. Yeah, no, it's probably got pee on it. You're done with it. You can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. Well, he did. One of the finest lines ever in any film. Really? See, and I like the one that he says right after that. I'm just going to tighten my belt because I have years of experience of starving to death. And (sighs) I've got years on you. And I'm just going to be able to outlast you in the hunger strike. Yeah. It's insanity. Tightening my belt one loop so that I don't feel hunger pains. And your sister and mother will have to do likewise. Okay, Joshua, you want to get rough with me? You want to show me that you don't like the choice of this house for a vacation but going on a hunger hunger strike? Well, I accept the challenge, but just remember, when I was your age, I really did suffer from hunger. (laughs) We'll see who gets through this, but just remember, I've got more practice than you. I'll see you tomorrow. (laughs) What? Good night, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. I really did suffer from hunger at your age. Yeah, you had a rough life. What was it? Was it the 30s? Well, he was was just poor. Was he in Ethiopia? He wasn't always a dentist. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, oh, yo. He grew into a pretty big man, though, for having starved when yeah, he was a kid. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. <laughs> so, you know, obviously he got some nutrition from somewhere. I'm going to tighten my belt loop one notch. And so is your mom and your sister. Okay, what's that going to do? Well, it hurts. So. Your pants are on too tight. That's. You don't notice that you're hungry because you're like, ah, my pants are so <laughs> tight. And I, then you start getting the indigestion because your pants are too tight. And you're like, oh, and then your back starts to ache. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Everything hurts. Good uh, thing I don't notice my tummy's empty. <laughs> God damn it. So weird. And then the boys run into this girl running through the woods who looks like she's been attacked by a bear. Yeah, she's... I don't know who this person is, and it's only Arnold that notices her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And he's like, I'm going to go find these virgins, and here comes one, maybe. That's, hey, this hey, is the, what? it's going to start. This, the party's going. Yeah. There's virgins that have been attacked by bears running through the woods. Damsel in distress. Here we go. How did she get all torn up? Where the hell is she from? Ooh. That was my question. Where did this person even come from? Because they don't have any non-goblins in the town. Right. Everybody's a goblin. So... Was she like a leftover from another Airbnb that they had... Uh... Yeah, that must have been like last month's family exchange uh-huh. and she just lasted a while. She's been in a cave. That's She crawled into a cave. There was a bear in the cave. Bear beat the shit out of her and she had to leave the cave and now that's where she's come from. But before she was part of the f- right, first family right. exchange. She's just okay. hanging out, f- moving from cave to cave, trying to avoid detection, but last cave had a bear in it. Yeah, and now the, no- the goblins... The bear tipped the goblins off. <laughs> He made a phone call. Because it's not only surly and mean, it's just kind of an asshole bear. <laughs> Mom, Greg the bear is calling. Hello? Roar. <laughs> he, fa- he found the blonde girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, bear. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, you're so surly. Cave okay, bear. Okay, so he chases after her, and he tries... The, the goblins show up, and he tries to reason with them. He's not... Arnold's not frightened by these goblins. He doesn't try to reason. He tries to big time them. Yeah. He's like, all right, fellas, you, you uh, get on out of here. Get on out of here. Otherwise, <laughs> there's going to be trouble. And he, he says, that there's going to be trouble. And I don't care how crappy and how small these children are. If you're Arnold, you don't really get out the threat checkbook ever. Arnold no, is, because Arnold is only like a foot taller than any of these goblins. Yes. He's one of the least imposing characters in any film ever. Yes. He's nerdy guy too. And he's not frightened of the goblins. Your antagonist can't scare Arnold. How is it going to scare the audience? No. Wow. So they, they do spear him though. He gets speared. Yeah. Right in the arm. Then he gets scared like, fuck. And they take him and the girl to the chapel place. No, they run they there. go to the house, which, like, let's go in this house. And it's like, that's a church. It is obviously a church as a spire. There is stained glass on the outside of it. That is a church. And inside is all sorts of spooky weirdness. Well, the first thing I notice about this church house is that there is a gigantic bed there yeah like, it's like a studio church now right when you walk in inside and outside don't mecca it's like a reverse tardis yeah it's yeah. much smaller on the inside <laughs> i think you're right it was it was like wow what's that bed doing there ay, ay, ay. i also like that they try to cover this later in the movie when they're at the uh sermon mm-hmm. that the reverend's like go or no it's the it's the crazy Don Packard's character in the drugstore says, go to the house that looks like a church. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, the, you, good cover. The rest of the movie's fucking falling apart, but you're going to save it with this one cover right here. And inside is a woman named Credence who is old. Question mark. Question mark. Here's your here's your makeup chance to, to talk about the makeup, Jackie. Yeah, and I am going to interrupt you. So they've obviously put some baby powder on her hair mm. to make her look a little older. Um, Maybe some circles under her eyes. But the thing that got me is she's obviously supposed to be an old lady. They dress her like an old school mom, right? Right. But then she's got these fantastic red fingernails. Uh-huh. Sexy time red fingernails on an old lady body. What about... <laughs> the teeth in her mouth yeah they obviously put uh some kind of black shit on her teeth pepper just it's pepper yuck her mouth is yuck uh-huh yeah and i guess that's like age like like you like she's a horse or something yeah i don't know i don't know yeah, why. like your teeth go bad and she is one of the worst makeup characters i've ever seen in a movie like ooh, she's an old witch no, that woman is clearly in her 20s. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I think she might be 30. Maybe. She's not old, Sam. One of, one of her kids is an extra. Gosh, I'm just she has saying children. Yeah. that her Avon lady fucked her big time. Oh, it is terrible makeup. <laughs> yes. And her character is... Whew. When you're... You asked about the girl, uh, Holly Waits, mm-hmm. and she's doing a bad job, mm-hmm. but... Deborah Reed, who plays Credence, has come up with something, and it sucks. I don't know what it is. I don't know what she's doing here. I have no idea what she was going for. Is she being a witch or insane or an insane witch? Because 
it's insanity. She looks fucking crazy. And the way that she delivers every line is like, what are you doing? She is overacting. Uh, way overacting. Which kind of sold me on it, if I'm quite oh, honest. Oh, it's great. It was she's like, hilarious. She's fantastic. Your your facial expressions, and you're just trying so fucking hard. It was like, yeah, okay, you know what? I, I can buy that you're an eccentric weird witch that has a piece of Stonehenge in your house right next to your giant bed. You keep using this word, I can buy it. I don't think you know what that means. I can buy that the she's a witch, Justin. Well, you're the first person on the history of the planet to ever say that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I buy it. She's a witch. Yeah, she, that looks right. That's what I would expect a witch to she, be like. Because she, in the movie, calls herself a Celtic druid. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I went with witch. I've seen some pretty shitty witch costumes around Halloween. So, you know, I've, I've seen worse. So I'm like, yeah, okay, she's a witch. Got it. I don't think she is. I don't believe it. Her acting is terrible. And so she gives them a witch's brew, I guess. Oh, she gives them some of the turn into vegetable stuff. A cup of dry ice. Yeah, a cup of dry ice. The other stuff isn't smoky. Yeah, that's true, but it all does the same thing. It's like she's made a witch's brew with the active ingredient being churn you into a vegetable. But when it when the gal drops the cup, it's just the green shit that's in there. Ay, ay, ay. So, which let's do that. Both of them drink it up. The girl churns into vegetable goo. And the goblins eat her immediately immediately but she has already obviously had some because she was sweating green before. Oh, okay all right all right so that happens a little to the time other guy too and arnold just turns into a tree yeah and doesn't get eaten i guess they're saving him for later you know and honestly i felt really bad for this kid when we were watching this after learning that he was tied into that pot for 14 hours because he was not in the movie enough to join enough no. to justify 14 hours of standing oh, in a pot there. three hours tops oh man that poor bastard yeah i mean i just felt really really bad for him so at one point you look at his eye in one of the shots and he just looks like he's like fucking kill me and you can only see his eye and i mean like at, at first you know his eyes kind of vibrant and he's awake and he's paying attention and then after a while it's like his eye just looks like it's like just giving up it's the only part of the body that you can see, and he's like, uh. I like Arnold. He's, he's one of my favorite characters in this film. Absolutely. Sure. He's great. Um, this is when the line happens. They are me. going to eat her. <laughs> and then they are going to eat me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Arnold. I cannot move. <laughs> Why can I not move? <laughs> Which is weird, because like, as I said later, he sort of like does some good line deliveries, just not when it mattered. Yeah. I like Holly's uh, kooky dance here, too. The, I'm an 80s girl dance in oh, the hallway. Shit. In her Aries pajamas. Oh, my God. That was supposedly like, I, I had read that that was her, one of the only things that was allowed to be ad lib was Claudio let her do that because she had tre- cheerleading experience. Because you see it the first time and you're like, she doesn't know how to do this. But she's doing it because she does know how to do this. (laughs) Is it worse than Top That? No. Top That's longer, so it's worse. This is very brief. Yeah. Okay. And it's definitely like the three or four moves that she learned at a cheerleading camp. It's it's also not worse than Vanity's monster dance in uh, Mm. The Last Dragon. So there's a much worse dancing out there. All right. All right. Good for Connie Young. Grandpa comes through the mirror, though. So now Grandpa's appearing to Holly. <laughs> no, he just is lost. He says that in the next. Oh scene. yeah, he's fucking. He's he's like he goes lost. Don't know whose room is whose. I haven't quite figured out the layout of this new house. I can stop time, but looking around in here is pretty tough. Uh, okay. So uh, even I, though the doors are labeled, <laughs> is there a chance that Grandpa Seth died, became a spooky ghost, but the spooky ghost also suffers from dementia? Like. Maybe he kept the Alzheimer's in the afterlife. I don't know. He because he's a little fucking crazy. He's daffy. He's nutty. This Grandpa Seth. He's a wild card. Oh man, he's dangerous. Because he's gonna show up with explosives. He at could one get point. us all killed. This Grandpa Absolutely. Seth. Absolutely. He's like, oh, I got the thing. I have all the. I have the powers of the Beyonder and a Molotov cocktail. You don't need the powers of the Beyonder. <laughs> You're a danger to all of the universe, Grandpa Seth. And then in the van, in the motorhome, the boys have woken up. Next to each other, With unclothed. No on. Wait a second. Question mark. 
okay, that's a strange choice to put in this film. And then Joe, I don't even know what his fucking name is, goes down to town to get some milk because they don't have anything. Yellow shirt. Yeah, yellow shirt. He just goes jogging into town. I'm going to run all the way to town. So if they just given up because their van broke down and so they're now somewhere along the ways to Nilbog and they're just going to hang out there now forever. Well, he tells the sheriff they're just out there hanging out. Like, they're that's their camping spot now. Broke down they're on broke the side down. of the road. And See, and I didn't think they were technically on the side of the road like they were before. It looked mm-hmm. like they had pulled off into, a, like, a camping ground area. I guess. <sighs> and the residents of Nilbog don't have bacon or eggs or toast. They only have Nilbog brand milk. Which is spoiled. Which is bad. It's gross. It's gone bad. It's what's, very chunky. What's the milk? It's the same shit as anything else. It's just not green. It's not the same shit. All of it does the same thing. Why not sell cakes that have the green shit on it? Why not have a bakery where it's like, wow, but these are amazing cakes. You need, if what if somebody's thirsty, they're not going to have a cake. I have some Kool-Aid. Here's some of this Kool-Aid. They do have green Kool-Aid. I don't know why they don't. Why do they have spoiled milk? I'm not sure. Nobody's going to drink that, guys. Bad plan. Oh, well, what's his face? Yellow shirt drinks it and then... A little bit, and then dumps it out because it's gross. Yeah. Well, you know, and it was free. Yeah, it free is milk. free. Yeah, free rotten milk. And if you're a homeless guy wandering through their town, and somebody goes, "Hey, free food," you're gonna it, give it a go. Where does it come from? Twenty six residents plus the presents plus the presents. So that's let's just do the math here. That's thirty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, thirty people. Thirty people. Okay. Uh, do they have a milk factory? You'd have to start with a cow. You need one of those. I didn't ever see one. Uh uh. I have... never saw a dog in this movie either. You don't have animals. You gotta have pasteurization. Uh you don't have to. No, you don't have to, but you probably should. It's First, vitamin D milk. If you're gonna make curdled milk, you may probably even want to bypass the uh pasteurization. Uh you need uh a packaging. They got that. Mm-hmm. Where, they just don't see the cat well, it's where the milk's the in it. Right, but where does that come from? Who knows? So they uh you have a packaging factory there and the label. So they got a label printer. Yep. Somebody bought that on the eBay, Justin. In 1990? Didn't have eBay. Sorry. They don't well, have they a cow. They stole it from one of the Airbnb people. The most important thing, clearly, is the cow. The lack of cow. The you lack need... of cow is a problem. I think it's just magic. I think it's magic milk. I think I think it's cauliflower that they have ground up to a fine Here's an- sludge. Here's another question is, if you want people to drink it and your magic, you should just make the normal milk poison them because they want to drink that. You should make Orange Crush. Here, have the most delicious beverage of all time. How did you know I love Orange Crush? Well, because everybody loves Orange Crush. Here you go, and then you drink it, and it's got the magic turn you into vegetable stuff in it. Yeah. Not moldy, grody milk. Stupid goblins. They're pretty dumb, though. Dumb dumbs. It's obviously the Celtic Druid that's running the show. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dad and Josh are also hungry, I guess. So they go into town, and Dad finds a vegetable cookbook. That puts them right to sleep. Right to sleep. Instantly... I don't need to take care of my son. Run free, child. Which he does. He just gets on a skateboard and fucking bails. Bails. Goes to the sermon. He pencils it. He puts it together that Nilbog is goblin backwards. Because he sees it in a a rear view of a car. Which didn't transpose the letters for me as a viewer. So I kind of had to think about that for a second. Nice. Right in front of you. It's, man, it's telegraphed from the very beginning, Jackie. (laughs) Yep, didn't get it until that point in the movie. Special delivery. They're goblins <laughs> in the town Nilbog. <laughs> didn't get it until, like, even the first time I saw this movie, I was like, oh, well, don't I feel like the town derp? <laughs> Got a package for you here. It's called a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I was told you needed one. So he goes to the, the, the sermon chapel that's in the basement. It's underground. I thought it was in an old, like, factory barn, barn meat processing pack. It's just a barn. Yeah. Yeah. And the preacher's in there giving a sermon about not eating meat. Yes. But they're eating meat. No. they People turn into vegetables. And then they eat It's still people. No, it's vegetables now. It's jello. And there's always room for jello. I think they're fucking meat eaters. It's, I uh, would argue that the uh, lovely couple that made this film are quite confused about vegetarianism. <laughs> Somehow, I'm going to skip a little bit. Yeah, ahead. I just got to get back to the party at the house. Well, Joe finds Arnold in the pot, goes oh, to yeah. the chapel somehow. And, well, because uh, they tell him when he comes out with the free milk, mm-hmm. hey, got a message for you. Your buddy says to go over to that house that looks like a chapel. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
And so he does. And the only reason I really want to talk about this scene is because Joe gets turned into green stuff, right? Yes. And Credence gets out a chainsaw and chops Arnold down. <laughs> sort chops of. his wiener off is what I got. Okay. Yeah. She's pruning him. And she's like, it's only going to tickle. And then it only does. He's like, yeah, he, <laughs> he laughs while getting chopped with a chainsaw. Yep. Yep. Does that is, is the terror is Credence saying that when you cut down a tree, it tickles to the tree? I guess. Hmm. I think she was saying, control yourself. Take only what you need from it. <laughs> <laughs> the forest of trees has uh, fallen. What? <laughs> to be calling. Little MG. MG. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Is there a mute button on her <laughs> mic? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Sierra Club, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You were on a weird one today, kid. <laughs> I swear to God, it's a real song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Josh gets sent to his room. I've been calling him Michael for a while. It's the actor's yeah, it's name Josh. is Michael. Yeah, Michael Joshua. Stephens or something like that. Is a- he gets sent to his room for being freaking out about the goblins again. because They were trying to feed him ice cream, Justin. Yeah, and I guess he said something snarky, and Dad doesn't like it. So he gets sent to his room. So up there, he prays for Grandpa Seth again. And That's when What's-Her-Face shows up through... Uh-huh. The mirror, but then Grandpa Seth chops her fucking arm off. Right. With an axe. Yep. And then she goes back he through. can hold. Yeah. Well, he's back in the corporeal world now. Yeah, but he's been in the corporeal world and hasn't been solid. Well, this time he's ready to f- ready for fucking action. Is he a fucking ghost or not? He's God a, damn it. He's a mystical commando ghost. Because <laughs> <laughs> he chops her fucking arm off. And the next thing you know, he's like... Here, we need to use this. And it's a Molotov cocktail. It's a straight up Molotov cocktail. You're like, so, Grandpa, uh, that's a little dicey, bud. Uh, did you spend some time with the IRA before yeah. you died, Gramps? Well, Grandpa and the whole Seth? town is at their house. Yeah. So, I mean, this is his opportunity. If he hated his parents for taking him to Nailbog, all he has to do is go downstairs, light this cocktail off, throw it in the window, and everybody's dead. What's What's the plan? Burn this motherfucker down? Yep, that's the plan. That was the plan of the IRA, too, so... Why not? Yeah. It's going to work. I don't think it will. Everybody's outside, except for the family. Inside at that point, and they're all dancing around the family going, eat the cake, eat eat the the cake. La, 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 la. By the time that you get to this point, everybody's obviously very hungry, and they can't eat the cakes because you're being too weird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just act normal, and they would have ate the cakes. No, yeah. but you're all like, here, eat it, yum, yum. Yummy, yum, yummy, yummy, yummy. You'll like it. Oh, Let hey. me stand and stare at you and clap. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm good on cake right now. Thank yeah, you. I, uh, Can you I'm leave? not hungry. Can you please leave? But still, Grandpa, you're going to burn your family down. Everybody's inside, including us. Uh, this is a point that I kind <clears throat> of feel like Grandpa thinks that as long as Joshua makes it out, everything's okay. He yeah. obviously thinks that the uh, father is a is a good for nothing because he says so. He does say that, and that because of that, he's basically lost faith in his daughter uh-huh. for marrying him. Uh-huh. And then uh, I'm just gonna, I, he never says anything sp- explicitly about Holly, but come on now, yeah, yeah, You've seen her, Mm-mm. yeah, I'm, no. I'm I'm with you there, Grandpa Seth. Yeah, that one needs to go. <laughs> Sell her to the convent. Do you sell people to the convent? No, I'm I don't think it. they just give them there and they take it. Yeah, that's too bad. <clears throat> and then he zaps the preacher with lightning powers. So the preacher takes, yeah, he takes the Molotov cocktail away. Uh-huh. But then, and then uses, he's like, go back to hell or something. Because the preacher is the head goblin knows some magic, I guess. Which means that Grandpa Seth knows, was from hell. No, he says, I'm not from hell to joshua in that scene that's not true that's just a rumor i i, I wasn't in hell don't worry yeah that's where he's like you're you're you we were in hell and he's like no i wasn't but i have to go back to heaven or some bullshit and then they do some magic back and forth which is like okay so it's the powers of zeus you've got runes grandpa seth is a rune soldier mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then he zaps the guy with lightning mm-hmm. which sets off the cocktail and burns him alive which reveals to the they, family that, that it's goblins. a goblin. And then, when you burn up as a person, you just turn into a gray goblin. Yes. Not, so now a pile of ash. Uh, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Oh, man. This is when things start getting really fucking bonkers. Because that's now we have the uh, Celtic Druid lady, Deborah Reed, has mm-hmm. put her hand in the 
Stonehenge magic stone. Stonehenge magic stone. And has healed her hand. And she's like, you know what? Let's take this shit one step further. Hotify me. Let's steam this picture up. So then she stands in front of it for a long time. And it cuts away and it cuts back. And she's still just standing there facing it. But when she eventually, some minutes later, emerges... Hubba hubba. Mm. <laughs> She's got some sweet garters on. I have decided. Okay. Deborah Reed has made the time machine hit list. Wow. She is a good looking woman. Hello. Hello. Damn. Deborah Reed, 1990. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. No, I, I don't think I don't think she was that don't attractive. Know what? I was this time around. I was like, you know what? She's good looking. <laughs> It's the corn cob in her garter, I'm telling you. And maybe it is the corn, Sam. Hot, sexy, sexy corn. I don't think the corn has anything to do okay. with it. Okay, all right, you never know. It was the uh, her obvious uh, attendance of the Savick School of Lovemaking, God where she it. puts her fingers all over his face. God damn it. I had to tell it. Savick. You can't make good jokes without <sighs> Star Trek movies. I just, I question whether that's... More vague than grokking something. <laughs> like, it is two definitely people. no. This will like it'll if this somehow if we put this podcast like on something two hundred years from now, someone will get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like Savic, yes, Savic, yes. I did not like quite, that. Quite humorous. Uh, <laughs> maha. She does rub the fingers strangely. Ha ha ha. Mm. That's how they laugh in the future. Yes. Good one, uh, Earthman. <laughs> past Earthman has made me amused. I approve. Now I will eat my food in pill form. <laughs> hey, it's green. Oh, no, vegetables. What's the deal here? She just goes and bones this dude. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Well, she got to look at herself. She realizes she's uh, she's prime, prime ace right now. She brings popcorn. She brings an ear of corn, and their sex is right. so hot that it it pops. She does not churn him into corn. No, he just gets some popcorn and some sex. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that was one of my questions. I was like, does he turn into? No, he, he clearly emerges from the popcorn and says, no more popcorn. Is she a goblin? No, she's a Celtic druid. She says as much. But she did turn into the to a goblin when she came through the mirror. Yeah. Huh. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what credence is, but I guess either way, you know, sometimes everybody's got needs, even mama. Oh, yeah. No, she's, you know, you got to you use your youth powers. You're going to mm-hmm. obviously be at the peak of your damage potential and your magic battle prowess. But at the same time, when in Rome, right? Right. Uh, now right. that I'm 26 again, time to get some action. So the fam's plan is to hold a seance to channel Grandpa Seth the most dangerous being known to man. And it works, but it makes Joshua turn into a goblin. He trades places. So Joshua teleports to the church, the house that looks like a church. Okay. Okay. That's true. Yeah, he does transport. And then he falls asleep. And in place of him is now a goblin. Good job. Yeah. Guys, good job, Grandpa Seth. Was that your doing? Again, he doesn't really care about the other three so much. Yeah, yeah. So he's at the stupid church with a backpack with a backpack and Grandpa Seth joins up with him and that's how they decide how to defeat the goblins because of Stonehenge magic stone is there. They just need to touch it and concentrate to defeat the evil uh, with their goodness. Uh, only the power of goodness can defeat, defeat the Stonehenge magic stone and stop them. The power of goodness. Yes. Maybe you shouldn't have Grandpa Seth there. <laughs> he doesn't actually touch the Stonehenge magic stone. He makes Joshua do it. He, uh, yeah, he does. Does he? I think he just holds uh, his hands up by it. Uh, it's both of them to start, and then George Hardy shows up later and helps out. But only the power of goodness can stop them. Yes. Which leads me to my first question. What about guns? Nobody tried guns. Okay. All right. Okay. They're no good against goblins or dragons. Mm-hmm. All right. Just making sure. <sighs> so the goblins are now <laughs> let's back up for a yeah. second so i mean it would be interesting if that was the ending but it wouldn't be as good as the actual ending if uh papa waits just shows up with a 38 and shoots her in the face <laughs> i mean you'd be like 
Oh, that is uh, that escalated quickly. Well, I guess that worked. Oh, well, good. we're going home. I thought only the power of goodness could stop them. Yeah, well, you never <laughs> know with the power of a Hot Smith lead. and Weston <laughs> kid. It's all the goodness I need. <laughs> <laughs> this is goodness. Colt 45 goodness. Got six packs of goodness right here. <laughs> I got your goodness at 4,000 feet per second, lady. <laughs> <laughs> the bologna sandwich. This is, again, that he says, don't reach into the bag until you need to, which is very vague. So when he's about to die, he figures it's time to reach into the bag. What's uh-huh. in there? He says it's a double-decker bologna sandwich. Uh-huh. It's not. There's an entire pack of bologna <laughs> in between an, a bun, top and bottom. That is serious baloney. It's a load of baloney. This movie's a load of And that's, again, I'm like, is he reticent of what's happening this here? This is clever. Because this is a load of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> what's he going to do with the baloney sandwich? He scares him because it's meat. So they're like, oh, no, but baloney. But they're not eating it. He's eating it. Yeah, it's like the cross for vampires. Baloney scares goblins. Then point it at him. Be like, all right, I'm going to get you. Instead of just shoving it in your fucking cake hole. Well, he eats some of it to gain the power of baloney. Because <laughs> he only takes a couple bites. And then they're he scared of it. it. Yeah. And then he runs over to the Stonehenge magic stone and then throws it like a hand grenade <laughs> back at the goblins and then starts concentrate touching the the rock again yeah rubbing his dirty baloney hands all over the stonehenge oh rock God. well it works goodness zaps all of them the power of zeus is called down and bzz, I, they're all gone poof a cloud of smoke and the family goes home the mom needs a shower and josh needs a nap where's dad and sis we gotta because she's like or he says i'm gonna go take a nap and she's like okay i'm gonna take a shower first so she's gonna beat him to the nap with the shower <laughs> Yep. Like, let's race. <laughs> See who gets done with their task first. <laughs> I win. I win. And she eats an apple. Yeah, she does eat an apple, which makes her churn into veggies in the shower. The only thing in their fridge was apples. And eaten. Did you notice that the uh, jello mold lady at the end had some boobies? She did. Yeah. Yep. thought that was distasteful. I like, did, too. Mom boobies. Mom boobs. Poor, poor We're Joshua. We're eating your mom, and here's her boobies. Yeah, her veggie boobies. Vegetable bees. That's worse than anything Jackie's ever said today. <laughs> Where's your mute button? <laughs> <laughs> then who would I talk to? Yeah, we all need a mute button. <laughs> talk to the dogs. <laughs> Freeze frame credits. Great movie. God, it's so awesome. It's just, oh, wow. It gets funnier every time you see it. And I love talking about it. I absolutely love talking about this thing because it's just so weird. All right, so here's how we're going to start this. I want... Each of you. Well, I'm going to ask one question first. Okay. Because of the, it alludes directly to the ending. So they didn't cancel the power of the Stonehenge magic stone. I don't think that they did. Yeah. They just warped all of the goblins that, directly to their kitchen. That's uh, counterproductive, to say the least. It could be Grandpa Seth. This could be all his end game because he only wants Joshua. So he, he uses the powers of evil because he is, to zap them into their kitchen so the mom will get turned into vegetables and get eaten. And that's just step one. Troll three is the hunt for George Hardy and Connie Young's characters. And troll four is the search for Spock. Right. Absolutely. I can't wait for that one to come out. Keep waiting. All right. So here's how we're going to do this. I want uh, I want each of you to take a line that Connie Young's character speaks in this film and attempt to make it worse than she does. I've thought for, because we talked about doing this before we actually did the podcast, so for two days I thought about the best one to do here. She actually screws up a line that is just the word yes. Okay. And I figured out the only way to do it is as such. Do you know what the uh, question was asked upon her? It doesn't matter because of the way that I'm going to say yes, it would just never work. Okay. This is the only way to say yes worse than the way she says it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i did worse jackie i want to uh i want you to give your your best do you want me to to lead you in do you want to do the first one or the last one i want to do the um are you start out with your nuts are you nuts you trying to turn me into a homo oh, my phone died sorry 
sorry. Wouldn't be too hard if my father discovers you here. He cut off your little nuts and eat them. He can't stand you. That was definitely worse. Definitely worse. Yeah. That's some of the crappiest I've ever seen anybody do. I was bored to tears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Questions. Jackie, go first. Who Dan, go first. Wow, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wait, so which one is it? I'll go first. Okay. What's their end game? What is the goblin's end game? To, to get dinner? Yeah, because they're hungry. That's... So they're going to eat every single person that ever comes to Nilbaugh. They only invite people that are dinner. To dinner. Yeah, it's like once a month they bring in a family and they eat them. That's sustainable. Yeah, a family of four. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. They're not going to eat every person on the planet. No, they're not going to take over the world. They're just having their little town. Okay. Just some strange disappearances, but you choose people from all locations in the country, so there's no uh, modus operandi. There's no pattern, yeah. yeah. The FBI can't make a profile on all these missing families of four. Who has the best hair? The best hair. George Hardy. Yeah, his is pretty impeccable. Uh, it's like the ape drape with a bit of a wave. Yeah, yeah. I I respect Connie Young's. It's uh quite tall, tall eighties poof hairspray curly working girl type hair. But I'm probably gonna go with George Hardy. Mm, I'm going with the daughter. Okay, okay, that was a good question. Like just because she was pumping weights at the beginning and her bangs didn't fall, not even an inch. She had so much fucking hairspray they could have just went up. She's got Loctite in her hair. She got something in there. Sam, what did Grandpa Seth do for a living? He's got the look of a longshoreman. Well, he has to be doing something that involves druid magic. Druid magic. Okay. Yes. Um, he owned a occultist store. In Maine. Yeah. Like on the coast. He also does a bit of crabbing on the weekends. I would see that. A little, little extra cash. He does some tarot cards for tourists. Uh, oh, and murders people for fun. He's He's got to be like Egg from Big Trouble in Little China. Very unassuming antique shop, but everything's actually super magical. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What is Grandpa Seth? Seriously. An abomination. I don't know. He's a... He's more than a ghost. He's more than a ghost. He's got the powers of the fucking Beyonder. He can do whatever he wants. Yes. He's a poltergeist. That's fine. Crawl through the TV. Suck me into frozen garage land. I, that is not the powers of Uncle Seth. Grandpa, Grandpa Seth. Seth. Poltergeists have got nothing on Grandpa Seth. Grandpa Seth could defeat the White Walkers in like a period of like five minutes and then have some sandwich, some bologna sandwich afterwards. Not even think about it. Yeah, he's too powerful. He's too fucking powerful, Grandpa Seth. He frightens me, and he's great. Back to you, Jackson. I don't have any more questions. Oh. <laughs> we answered my last question, which was whose RV was it? Okay, who's your favorite character? Boy, I wish I had the powers of Grandpa Seth right now to get an answer out of one of you guys. <laughs> I like the mom best. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's wild. That that's is left field. That is very... Uh... She's just so spacey and... It looks like she's always, she sounds like she's always reading her lines off of a cue card that is placed somewhere in the room mm-hmm, in front mm-hmm, of her. Mm-hmm. And she just seems like she's just not all there, which makes it interesting to really watch her make her way through this movie because it's like, hello. Yeah. I anyone have, home? I have a feeling that she, there's a lot of her lines just got left on the floor because she was too confused to do it right. Yeah. I can see that too. Sam, who's your favorite? Elliot. Elliot. Yeah. Okay. Definitely Elliot. Why? He's the funniest. Okay, I disagree with you. I Well, I just like his little... <laughs> this time around, I really appreciated him telling those goblins how things were going to go. <laughs> oh, wait, you're talking about Arnold. Arnold, sorry, his name is Elliot in real life. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Arnold. Arnold is my favorite. I would say that Arnold is probably the most underrated. A lot of people like Greg Hardy, George Hardy. A lot of people like Grandpa Seth. I think I'm still on Grandpa Seth, Team Grandpa Seth. Yeah. A lot of people like Connie Young. Arnold is very underrated. I liked him so much more this time around. Maybe one more viewing Arnold's going to make my top, but for now it's Grandpa Seth because he's just so bonkers and bad. The actor playing Grandpa Seth is also not good. We really kind of didn't state that enough. (laughs) I think he did as good as you could 
looking into the distance and saying Stonehenge Magic Stone out out loud. There it is. Stonehenge Magic Stone. <laughs> yeah. How do you, you can't it's an undeliverable line. <laughs> the Stonehenge Magic Stone. You can't do it. It's too stupid. <laughs> Has there ever been a song made that is this bad? Like a pop popular music song? Mm, mm. Huh. There probably has, but I don't I wouldn't be able to name it off the top of my head. The closest I can get is that stupid Jefferson Starship song, We Built This City. That song sucks. Sucks. I don't like the Our House in the Middle of the Street. Ooh, Our House in the Middle of the Street is popular though. A lot of people do, but I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, but uh, I I don't think it's as bad as We Built the City. So I don't think that there is. They I, built the city on rock and roll. Right. But the song is obviously keyboard pop. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's as bad as Troll 2 though. Oh no. No. Yeah, I don't think there is one. I think I don't know if you can make a song this bad. You can make bad songs and put them in Troll 2, which they did, but uh, Yes, they did. Oh man. It's okay. So Oh, what about Madonna's This Used to Be My Playground? Ooh, that one does suck. Yeah, but I think people still like it. I don't know. I don't know. So I think it's quite clear that we all recommend this film. Oh, absolutely. I want to I want to start with you first, Sam. Give me your final thoughts on Troll 2. That it's such a strong do because now five times through, it was the funniest. I don't know if it's going to continue to get funnier, but it has been increasingly funny and more funny for five viewings. I have been able to keep it to where I've kept a couple years in between viewings mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. So just incredibly hilarious. Jackie? I think the overacting and, you know, the real heart and soul of everybody really trying to pour it into this movie, I, I it's just so damn enjoyable. And then lo- the little things that you notice when you watch it again, like what is for, bur- and, and it's supposed to be what's for breakfast, mm-hmm. but he doesn't say the word. I think he says Burkfest. <laughs> yeah, he like says something weird. So you're like, oh, that's weird. And like those little weird things that you pick up the second time around, I think uh, make it more entertaining. So I, I'm going to give it a definite do. Okay. I, of course, stand by it. Uh, it's in my top three of my Hall of Fame uh, bad movies. It is not going to change from its position. Uh, the thing that I really picked up on this when we watched it this time is that it's really accessible for how awful it is. I can't stack it next to... to to bring somebody in that's... What, what are you guys talking about? You watch bad movies. What are you talking... I don't know what that is. Why, why, why would you watch a bad movie? Yeah. You can't bring somebody in that's never seen something like that into the room. No, you can't give them Williamson. You can't give them Manos. You, because there's so many different types of people... Monster or Go-Go. ...that like bad ty- like bad movies of a single genre. A lot of people really like bad action movies, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't be able to... like. You couldn't give them Mommy Dearest and have them like it. Right. Say. Or Birdemic... Or anything like that, but you can introduce anybody to this film, and I don't think that there's anybody that's gonna go. They, they may not like it, but not go. Holy shit! I just can't see somebody making it through the, the first twenty minutes without starting to laugh. Yeah, I it don't either. Impossible. I don't either. I think you can take like an actual really strong, like oh, I only watch good movies. Like uh, I work for AFI, or or I'm Roger Ebert, and you could do a dual showing with. The last picture show and then troll two <laughs> and have it work perfectly because it is polar opposites of good filmmaking, but totally enjoyable. And and there's just not very many other movies like that. And there may not be any other movies no, like I, that. I think it's the most universal bad movie mm-hmm. because there isn't any every other mo- really bad movie has some ability to alienate. Uh, typical large group, and mm-hmm. this one does not. Does not. Absolutely not. No, it plays by... Does a really good job. Uh, this is a great film. Absolutely do. Can't be missed. Uh, it's one of my favorites. So, Next up is Sam's pick next week. Sam, what are you bringing? Kung Fu movie. Rambo 3. Oh my god, yes. About fucking time. Game of chicken. Yes. With a helicopter and a tank. God, I love that movie. How is do that you what even... it's called? Rambo 3. Game of chicken. Semicolon. Game of chicken. With a helicopter and a tank. No, but there that happens. Oh, that sounds how awesome. How do you do that exactly? With one being a flying machine and another one not. Well, we'll find out. In the meantime, get to the flying tank. Visit us at www.stinkermadness.com.